This is how to fix a Fisher Price um, cradle and swing. There's lots of different models, but they're all basically the, the exact same. What you have to do first is there's going to be a whole bunch of screws. Basically, any screw that you can see underneath, you're going to have to take that out. Um, and then once we separate it, you'll kind of see how we progress. And you might have to move the swing side to side to actually get a screwdriver up into it. And then there's going to be four screws right here that you need to take out um, that hold this together. And then if you've taken the five screws out on each side, so there's 10 screws, so a total of 14 screws, then this should just kind of snap apart. Yeah. And it's not going to fall off, so you don't have to worry about holding it. And then this cover, we're going to just kind of lift it off and set it to the side. Okay, once you've taken the top off, there's these really thin wires. You can set it on those, but obviously don't shove it. Make sure there's no kids running around that can knock it. Um, the motor resides in here that goes bad. Just kind of pushes this toggle back and forth, which causes the swing to rock. Um, but in order to get this out, you have to take this bracket off. So there's going to be, uh, if my crazy camera would focus, there's a, there's a screw right here and a screw right there. So we'll take both of those off and we'll continue the video. You just pull it around, make sure you don't, undo that wire otherwise uh, you won't have a spinning mobile thing because those are the wires that go to that so then the next part is taking this out there's just gonna be you have one two screws now that you got these two screws out um, then this will just pull out like I said some other ones have more screws there's screw holes for these ones I think then another model I did had a, a screw right here Okay, so I had to pry a little bit to separate this plastic over to pull this out. So I'll just kind of, now it comes out. Okay, so we're just gonna take out these screws here. Now this all just kind of falls apart here. So when we put it back together, this pin and then there's this hole on here and that hole lines up with that and that little pin has to go into this this section of the wheel and then really all this does is pulls pulls apart might have to kind of pry it but it just kind of comes off of there so then you're just left with the motor and then this this deal separate okay this is the motor that we're going to replace you should cut it off the leads right here um, and these motors, if you try to buy them anywhere online, they're going to be like 20 bucks. Um, but these Airwick Freshmatic Ultras, um, they're like 477 plus you get a little smell good thing in there. Um, if we take this apart, we'll show you how you can actually get that same motor out of this. The motor is hidden back inside of here, so there's going to be two Phillips screws. Oh. So you just kind of snap it apart after you've taken out those screws. And it should just kind of pull out. Get this out. You can just kind of cut the leads and start pulling on it, but I'd recommend just taking the screws out just so you don't end up ruining your ends or anything like that. And you can reuse the wires that are attached to it. Now we're just going to snip these wires. I snipped the blue one off of here. And should be able to just kind of pull that through. And then the red one is going over to that battery lead. So we'll just snip that one also. And so then you just have your two leads here. Um, and since we pulled out those other screws, this should all just kind of pull out. You don't really care what happens to that. Um, and then there's gonna be these couple screws. This kind of, you just take all this apart. It's got all sorts of goop on it. And you have these two screws right here. And once 
axles are free. If you pull this apart, that, that little gear that was on there comes right off. Okay, so you got your two motors. I'd recommend sticking them in a box or something because obviously, you know, setting them on a flat surface is kind of hard to solder. So if you just poke that little shaft, whatever, on the end through there. Um, so now you're just going to want to take all this stuff off and put it onto this, this one right here. You just take that, that piece from the other motor. It should just slip on it. And I'd push push on this part because if you push on this, it might come apart. And you don't want to sink it all the way home, but just so you can, it freely spins. And then you just set this in there. And at this point, you can move this around. And you can see that there's Okay, on this, there's these lines right here and here. Lines right there and there. And then it'll slip into that the line right in there. You don't want to put this piece of foam back in here. It just kind of snugs everything up. So this is a tricky part. So you gotta line up these two, and then you gotta get that pin to go inside of that other linkage there. That inside there, that little chunk of foam's on top and it hasn't fallen down where it's gonna get in the gears. Then once you get it in, you can just kinda slide it all together and then insert the three screws. Okay, and then once you put those, those three screws in that, then you can slide this back in. And here's your new leads. Um, and then here's your old ones. So when you reconnect it up, if the polarity's wrong, it'll go slow. It won't be at this speed. Um, so then you just switch, switch which ones the leads are connected to. The next part is going to be setting this back, this notch. So then this this toggle goes between that notch. And just get that in between there, tighten down those two screws, and you can reassemble everything. And I didn't put, but you just use little wire nuts, something that you can tuck in there. And then just make sure when you're putting everything together that you don't have any wires pinched anywhere. Once you get it all back together, it should work. Just like it did before.